in our opinion from the criminal law committee this literally is of public public importance because you are essentially having members of the Barbados Police Service being caught in breaching someone's constitutional rights. These, someone's constitutional right are, is fundamental. And if it is we are breaching persons' fundamental rights, but what are we really doing in a, in a 21st century Barbados? We're setting all these goals in 20, 2030 and we want to do this and we want to do that. But I think this is one of the things we need to focus on. Now, lastly, I just want to add, in terms of recommendations, we would encourage the Attorney General and Cabinet, everyone, to look at the police stations across the country. Look at them. For example, Oystein's police station, their interview room is right next to a car park. A normal civilian can literally lean against a window and listen in on your conversations. Can you imagine that? There's no dedicated room. On one occasion, I had to wait three hours because the police were taking a statement in the attorney-client room. So I can't get my work done because it's being used for a different purpose. Of course, there's going to be an expense. But if it is that we want to play indigent in matters like these, what is the point of having a justice system? The other thing that I would like to add is soundproofing these rooms and having a room that is specifically designated for attorney-client conversations. The attorney, as Ms. Graves rightfully pointed out, will be able to go in, assess the room, look for themselves because I know Ms. Graves have been in rooms like myself where it is you will go and you will see the top of the ceiling, it will be cracked and pushed to the left or right. And you are wondering, Okay, is, is something up there? So then you don't want to seem as if you're paranoid, but an incident like this makes you want to be paranoid because you're now wondering if it is someone is listening in on your conversation. And the second thing is, let's say, for example, because criminal attorneys will deal with persons who are accused of serious matters. Now, we do not make an assessment in terms of guilt or innocence. We do our job. We fight for you if it is you say you are not guilty. If you say you are guilty, we take the appropriate course. But one thing that I would add, this incident, now let's say for example, her client goes and says, or the police says, well, oh, you play, you're telling your lawyer so and so. Client now starts to wonder, well, is it that my lawyer is leaking information to the police? Now, two things can happen to that attorney. One, you can either have it in a situation whereby the attorney's professional reputation is now being called into question. So that attorney will no longer be able to make a living because you are doing things that are illegal. The second thing is, is that if you but a client now that listens to that, hears that, and that client says, well, I am going to take matters in my own hand because my attorney should not be doing that. Because no, you're putting attorneys at risk. You're putting attorneys at risk by doing that. And the only way we can circumvent this issue is by one, have a commission of inquiry in respect of this matter. That is one. Two, going forward, make sure that there are adequate facilities for attorneys when we come to work. That's the only way this is going to work. That's the truth. And the last recommendation I would like to add is limiting the persons who can enter any client attorney room. The station early or uh, the, not the station early, it would be the station sorry. It's a particular police officer that who's tasked with um, dealing with suspects in the room, making sure the attorney is allowed to see the client. That attorney, he is literally on a roster during the day. On his shift, he's the person that's responsible for attorneys being allowed. So, for example, he's the person responsible for ensuring that the suspect gets something to eat and this and all these different things. So what would happen? That particular person 
he would only have access to that room. And anyone else caught in that room should be penalized. Should be penalized. And we need to have some serious reform in respect of how police conduct investigations into themselves. And we need to look, and I would encourage Parliament to look at the Police Complaints Authority Act. Look at that Act. There are some things in there that need to change because there are certain powers that are still vested with the Commissioner of Police because it is, as we say, who police in the police? 